you need these 100 products. You know, we want the freedom of the marketplace to work. We want the money left in Kentucky and not taken to Washington. You mentioned coal, and I noticed on your website you talk about energy freedom. What role would coal play, if any, in your overall energy plan for America? Well, I think huge. I think people out here would find that I'd be a great friend to coal, not because I come to eastern Kentucky to pander to coal, but because I believe business should be left alone from government. I think the permit process needs to be made easier from the federal level and the state level. I think we shouldn't have special taxes on their profit. I think we should have lower corporate taxes. Those create jobs. I'd much more rather lower taxes on the coal industry so they can hire a new hundred new workers than I would say let's tax the coal industry send it to Washington so we can get a hundred new people digging a ditch that may or may not need to be dug so yeah I'm, I'm greatly in favor of that I think coal is a big part of our future because we have a lot of it still in the United States it's fairly readily accessible and it's where we get most of our electricity. Coal out competes, and a lot of people don't know this, you may out here know this, but about half of our electrical needs come from coal, and it's cheaper than oil and gas, actually, for your electricity. What about mountaintop removal? I think whoever owns the property can do with the property as they wish, and if the coal company buys it from a private property owner and they want to do it, fine. The other thing I think is I think coal gets a bad name because I think a lot of the land apparently is actually quite desirable once it's been flattened out. As I came over here from Harlan, you've got quite a few hills. I don't think anybody's going to be missing a hill or two here and there, and some people like having the flat land. Some of it apparently has become quite valuable when it's become flattened, and I think they do a good job at reclaiming the land and and you know, adding back in topsoil, bringing in elk. So I think they're doing a good job at it. But the bottom line is, it's not just me pandering to coal, it's me believing in private property. If they bought the property, they own the property, they can do with that property as long as they don't pollute someone else's property. And I don't think they want to. If they dump something in the river that goes to the next property, your local judges here will stop them. But I don't think they're doing that. I think what they're doing is what they can do with property they own and doesn't appear to me to be something the federal government should be getting involved with. Cap and trade legislation, some have estimated that it could add somewhere between two to three thousand dollars a year on, on uh, our nation's families, uh, maybe more here in Kentucky. Right. Uh, where do you stand on that legislation? Absolutely opposed to cap and trade, absolutely opposed to any carbon tax. And I think that it's important because it's a distinction between someone like me who I think can give you a straight answer and a lot of these career politicians. You know, I debated Jack Conway out in Louisville a couple of months ago, and he kind of said, well, I'm kind of a little bit for it. I'm kind of a little bit against it. I'm not sure where I stand on cap and trade, but I sure want to be part of the negotiated settlement when it comes about. That's what you get from career politicians. They're afraid to take a stand. They don't know what their beliefs are, but they want to be part of the negotiated compromise in the end. And I think that would be a disaster, not only for Kentucky because of coal, but for consumers of electricity across the country. You're right. I've seen estimates from $500 a year to several thousand dollars a year that every person will pay in increased electrical costs.